shit is a vibe, you can't blow the high When they come from faith in the most high I can have a drive, nigga, no matter how much you deprive me, nigga, huh? Abraham and Isaac, you know, it's nothing to no sacrifice, nigga, huh? Like a 7-5, got me feeling like niggas gotta hide Every year before Passover, we try to link up with people who we have odds against, grudges against, and you try to iron that out, right? Because you know you'll be unworthy to eat the lamb and to uh, partake in the ceremonial meal. And the reason is, is because what does the lamb represent? Yahweh Shai. And how did Yahweh Shai say that the world would know you were his disciples? Hello? By your love for one another. But what you guys have forgot is that it's not just about the grudges that you may have against this person and that person. It's also about your secret sins and your secret iniquities, your hidden iniquities. So I want to expose that because we all have we all have hid it, we all have had secrets. Now, where you become a real man or woman of the most high is when you confess your iniquities, your faults, your secrets, and not let them linger. See, the first three chapters of, of Genesis, where it's dealing with creation, is literally compacting 7,000 years of, of, of history. And there's a multiplicity of applications when you deal with Genesis, especially, give me Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. The first thing Adam and Eve did when they committed sin was what? They hid themselves, right? But what did they do after that? They sold the fig leaves. He must be Sakari Varsity, whoever he is. So they sold the fig leaves. Why? Because although they committed a transgression, they also had tried to cover it. They wanted to hide it, but they wanted to cover it with the fig tree that was supposed to be an apron because they were doing other righteous things, although they were hiding some secret sin. And that's what's appeasing some of you guys. That's what's making you guys able to continue in this secret sin or secret. It could be something little. It could be something big. But that's what's making a lot of you guys think your secret iniquities and your secret sins is okay because you, you're doing some righteousness in another place. Say like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to Sabbath. I'm keeping the Sabbath. I'm doing the work on Saturdays. I'm wearing my fringes, but I got this thing that I'm dealing with and I don't want nobody to know or I want to keep doing I want to hold on to. Purging the leaven is not just, you know what? Drop that, my bad. Let's start with 2 Corinthians, what is that, 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians, no, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Oh, no, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, my bad. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Let me back this up. So we, we, we're getting rid of our grudges. We're trying. But there's other things that are considered leaven that we have to purge out. That we have to do. Or you're still going to be eating the lamb unworthily. Right? Come. Give me that. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and the 7th verse. It says, purge out therefore the old leaven. The what? The old leaven. The old leaven. Why? It's because some of you guys never became a new creature. You became a new shell on the outside. The beard. The fringes. External laws. Some of y'all might have got baptized, you understand? But you're keeping the external part of it, but not you have not cleaned the filth out of the cup. That same trigger, oh, I'm triggered, I'm triggered. My wife triggered me, oh, my husband triggered me, I still got triggered. Because you haven't cleansed the inside of the cup. That's right. So you haven't purged out the old leaven. Continue. It says, purge out, therefore, the old leaven, uh -huh. that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. He you says, go ahead, tell off you. It says, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. It says, therefore, 
let us keep the feast, not with all leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Not some of y'all who ate the lamb last year because you were too scared and afraid and you had so much pride that you didn't want to iron out an issue that you may have had or you didn't want to repent from something that you may have been doing that's going off. So you ate it with the old leaven. Go ahead. It says, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Sincerity and truth. And truth is, is that there's a lot of secret iniquity. There's a lot of hidden iniquity, not just in Sakari, but in Israel. And we, this is a nationalistic thing. Yes, we love Sakari. We die for Sakari. It's Sakari to the death. It's one west to the death. But this is a nationalistic thing here that we have to purge out the old leaven and keep it with new, just like the wine. You can't put new wine in what? Old bottles. Now get me from there. Go to, um, now, now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and the 17th verse. Let's see. These numbers are kind of small. I'm just trying to help you guys out. Yeah, that's, right. that's all I'm trying to do. Okay. You ain't got and, and the Bible does say confess your sins one to another, but there's some nasty shit that some of you guys might be doing. And I'm not talking, don't think sexually all the time, but that that's a part of it too, though. There's some nasty things that you guys are doing or have done that you don't want to reveal when the Bible says to uh, confess your sins one to another. So you're wrestling inside with yourself. Go ahead. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 verse. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, if you be in Yahushai, then what? He is a new creature. He's a new creature. Your mama can't tell. Your mama. Yeah, my son went in Hebrew Israelites, nigga, because you ain't showing her that you changed, you had a metamorphosis. When Paul says what, right? Con uh, don't be conformed to the image of the world. What is that? Is that, find that for me. First Corinthians 12, Romans 12? Yeah, get, get that for me. And then get the Greek word for conform. Yeah, get that now. Vocal shot. No one can tell you changed. They can tell your outfits changed, your diet's changed, but morally you have not changed, at least adequately. Go ahead. Man, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna have to uh, have this dude speak this, this uh... Strong's G, 4964. Sus Yeah, y'all see why I wasn't gonna say that. But it means to conform oneself, uh, one's mind and character to another's pattern, fashions of self according to. It says uh, to fashion alike, to conform to the same pattern, to conform to fashion self according to. Corinthians 5 and 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in the Mashiach, he is a new creature. It says, All things are passed away. It says, Behold, all things are become new. The Greek word is equivocal to a metamorphosis. That's right. Even in the Greek, it's called metamorphale, I believe. A metamorphosis. The situation that a tadpole goes through to become a frog, right? So go back to that new creature verse, because this is what we need to be doing. Getting rid of the old 11, purging yourself from your secret sins, your hidden sins. You're trying to hide, like, like going back to Genesis 3, when it says the Lord was walking through the garden. Of course, that was the prophets, but in this application, the Lord sees your sins. How are you going to hide? How are you going to have secret sins from your Yahweh? And I'm, I'm going to eat the lamb because my officer don't know what I've been doing. I'm going to eat the lamb because my wife don't know what I've been doing. I'm going to eat the lamb because the leadership don't know what I'm doing. Nigga, you know what you're doing. That's right. Go ahead. 
uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and the 17th verse. It says, Therefore, if any man be in the Mashiach, he is a new creature. It says, Old things are passed away. It says, Behold, Behold all, all things, things are become, become new. new. Now give me that in Psalms. Captain. Psalms, go ahead. Book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Read it one more time. It says, who can understand his errors? Who can understand his errors? Why? Because sometimes the Lord makes us, no, not sometimes, the Lord does make us to err. But if we understand that everything is predestination and the ultimate will of predestination is for you to be conformed into what? The image of, yeah, I was shy. That's Romans 8, 28 to 30. Right? Go ahead. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Cleanse me from my secret faults. So y'all don't have to say, oh, you know, but they're going to look at me some type of way. Or if I express myself, if I confess this, or, you know, if I let this go, what is it going to do to me mentally? Even your king, once king, right? King David, said he has secret iniquity. Secret faults, secret sins. So we are all in the same boat, brothers and sisters. I've had to go through it, you know. Um, I've had to really check myself before any counsel, before any therapy. If you can't wake up in the morning and counsel yourself, because there's going to be some times where you can't call, if all hell break loose and you end up by yourself, or let's say how long it takes. I believe spiritually, and me speaking as a man, that our tribulation is not going to be a long and drawn out thing predicated on Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 when it says you will have tribulation 10 days. But let's say that it's long and drawn out and you can't get the counsel from the brother or the counsel from the leader or call a black therapist and, a, and you know what I mean? Then you have to be able to raise yourself up out of your situation. And empower yourself. Now get me um, uh, Genesis. Now get Genesis chapter 3. Go ahead, brother. You can this, get Genesis 3. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, the 13th verse. It says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Damn. It says, But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Mm -hmm. Because how are you going to ask for forgiveness for a hidden. How are you going to ask for forgiveness for a secret hidden iniquity? Doesn't it say, what is that? What does that mean, John? I think that's 1 John, where it says, if we um, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Find that for me. Y'all think that it's just going to magically go away, whatever you're dealing with is not. It's not going to magically go away. If you ain't going to confess it to the brothers and sisters, then you better you got to confess it to the Most High. It's not going to go away. That thing has to be forgiven. You got to really plead the blood. Oh, this is going to bless one of you guys after this tonight. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 John chapter 1 and the ninth verse. Uh -huh. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we confess our sins, I see some of y'all moving in the crowd. And that demon's getting uncomfortable, huh? You're like, ooh, wait, why do you want to... I was comfortable with this hidden iniquity. Demons start moving around. Hell is hot, too, right? So give me uh, Isaiah 59. No, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, you hold Isaiah 59 and 2. Yeah, go ahead and read that for me in Genesis 3. Uh, verse 8 to 10. The Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence. What they do? They hid themselves from the presence. Because they had committed iniquity. They had trespassed, so they tried to hide it. Go ahead. From the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. Amongst the trees of the garden. And that's what the Bible says. The Lord's eyes are what, everybody? 10,000 10, times. 10,000 times, right. Young bundles know what I'm talking about. That's a bar, right? So the Lord's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. You're not hiding it. And he could surely reveal it to the prophets. 
He could surely do it. Our, my dear beloved friend and leader, Chief Priest, Alazar Bunloya, a.k.a. the Gorilla, he would been having dreams on dreams on dreams that have been coming to pass. So, yes, the Most High wants you to deal with it and confess it to him so that he can forgive you and empower you by the way of the Holy Spirit. But there's times where he can reveal it to the prophets. What is that? Amos 3 and 7. You don't got to get it. But he revealed his secrets. His secrets he reveals to the prophets. And he can even reveal your secrets to the prophets. Go ahead. Verse 9. It says, And Yahweh called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. That's eight. It's ten. You want to go back to eight? Uh, oh, it was seven. Read verse seven. My bad. Seven and eight. One more time. It's Genesis chapter three, verse seven. It says, and the eyes of them both were opened. And they were both open. They had realized they had transgressed. It says, and they knew that they were naked. And they knew that they had gone off. And they sold fig. And I'm not talking about the ignorant sins that we commit. Because there is the sin of ignorance that we commit. And there are sins that we commit that we just don't have any control over. Such as the, the Torah says we're supposed to be in Jerusalem keeping the Passover. And we got to make certain sacrifices during the Passover. But we cannot physically do that. There's no erected temple. The bastards are in our land. So there are sins that we can't control, and then there's ignorant sins. They knew they were naked, so they knew what they had done was wrong. So you don't have any excuse. Go ahead. And they sold fig leaves together. And they sold this fake apron. Butt cheeks out in the back. You know, <laughs> front cover. This inadequate <laughs> inadequate insufficient covering because they did not confess it to the most high and allow proper forgiveness because remember later on he took them aprons with the butt cheeks out and he gave them the, the skin of coats symbolizing what an animal sacrifice had to be made and now what is our sacrifice today Yahweh Shai Mashiach so go from there to Isaiah 59 and 2. Uh, uh, sorry, it's I. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and the second verse. It says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Read that again. It says, but your iniquities. Your iniquities, your secret sins and hidden iniquity. Go ahead. Have separated between you and your God. Now, now, this is deep. When you, when you try to hide things from the most high, what does he do? Dispose of He hides from you. And that verse is going to tell you that. Go ahead. It says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you. And your sins have hidden his face from you. So what would you rather do? Hide your little wickedness from me? And that way the Most High hides his face from you? There is no sin and iniquity that is uncommon to man. I know that that verse is speaking about tribulation, but we can apply it in this situation. We all deal with the same stuff, y'all. We all deal with the same stuff. And I had a good night last night. It was good. What's up, Priest Maloya? Shalom. I had a good night. My brother, my Levite brother wasn't there last night, but I had a good night last night. My brother Adnan, where's he at? Where Adnan at? Hey, 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 I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, right. Last night, that was amazing. Some good turkey wings. Um, that food was amazing. And just being around our people, whether they're in the truth or not, is amazing. And so, you know, we're out, we're hanging out, and uh, we go back to the Airbnb. It's just me and my brother Maccabees. Where are my brother Maccabees at? Maccabees. Maccabees was like, Deacon, last night? Um, you was out of your body kind of that's another word for drinking right and I was like nah I wasn't I went home to the Airbnb and this was like 5 in the morning and I got this lesson I didn't know what I was going to talk about today 
I got this lesson downloaded to me from the Most High with precepts. And I said, damn, I got to I got to check. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I know I'm not hiding no iniquity. So, or I don't have any secret iniquities, even though I mess up. I said, you know, this this has to be for, for somebody who's going to be watching. I mean, uh, people, not just somebody. These are the only people who are watching or people who come to the, to the ceremony. And so, uh, we just want to remain in the spirit. Coming up, what are we going through? Probably about... In less than an hour here, we're going to be having this ceremony. So we just want to make sure we're mentally, spiritually um, prepared, you know what I mean, as we go before the Most High and eat of this land, right? So uh, did y'all have anything? Appreciate it. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, and the 17th verse. It says, for my eyes are upon all their ways. It says, they are not hid from my face. It says, neither is there iniquity hid from my eyes. <laughs> it ain't hid. So when you hide your little secret iniquity, he's going to hide his face from you. Because what? It says, your iniquities have separated you from your... What separates you from the most high? Your sins. So why hold on to them? We are the smartest people in the world, but sometimes this is why he, he calls us the donkey and the um the eyes. Because we act like the most simple people, even though it, the Deuteronomy 6 says the Torah was supposed to be uh, our wisdom in the sight of the nations. We can't grasp little simple things. We act like it's a complex concept that the reason why things might not be going in our favor and we're getting extra tribulation. We know under the curses, but niggas be one extra. Oh, it makes me an Israelite. I will be talking to this one brother. I ain't gonna say his name. He's in Sakari. Uh, but he just be like, yeah, you know, just double shift, triple shift, you know, the wife, uh, my back, you know, car ran out of gas, alternator, you know. I'm an Israelite, you know, just things that an Israelite should be going to. Niggas put themselves. That's, if that's the lamb, he's out of this school. <laughs> um, and 40 lashes. Um, but, you know, we understand collectively we're under the curses, but we don't need to put ourselves under extra curses. That's just us being wicked and having to pay for our wickedness, which I was supposed to do a class a long time ago, understanding the difference between judgment and tribulation. You know, and Lord willing, I can, I can go into that because that's very important to know why you're going through hardship. Is it judgment or is it tribulation? And only thou canst tell because everybody don't know your situation, right? So, um, you're done with that, Chief? I mean, Chief, Sergeant Slocky. Let me also get uh, Psalm 32 and 5 and then... Uh, Psalm 69 and 5. And it seems like our, our dear beloved brother, King David, was dealing with this a lot. We don't know all his sins. We do know that he was forgiven for his sins, except for the one matter with Uriah, the Hittite. And um, the reason why he was forgiven for all his sins, who knows why he only has one sin on his record with the raise of a hand? Why did King David only have one sin on his record? Who's that little kid in the back? Little, hey, who's that little kid in the back raising his hand? I seen him. He raised his hand. Don't get us uh, scared now. Okay. Uh, Zakaria, go ahead. Exactly. So, animal sacrifice, according to Leviticus chapter 4, forgives our sins, but there are some sins that you commit unto death. Your ass not making no sacrifice. Your head is tumbling down Bethlehem Road. Right? So he was dealing with this secret sin and hidden iniquity a lot because you'll find four, probably ten precepts within Psalms where King David is speaking about secret sin and hidden iniquity. Right? So read that for me, Book Pusha. 32. Uh, 32 and 5 and then 69 and 5. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 32 and the fifth verse. 
It says, I acknowledge my sin he, unto thee. He did what? I acknowledged my sin unto thee. Brothers and sisters, if you didn't commit a sin unto death, and I'm not talking about hiding that shit. You niggas gonna die for that. Right. But I'm talking about the, the things that we struggle with that we know are going off or, or wrong, and, and we know it's a sin, and we have not revealed it, repented, acknowledged, or confessed it. He said he did what, your time? He said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it, brothers. That's the first thing. Acknowledge it. Don't ignore it. Don't sweep it under the rug. Acknowledge it. Then what? And my iniquity have I not hid. He has not hid his iniquity. This is why he was a man after God's heart. God's own heart. That's how you become a man after God's own heart. Lord, I messed up. That's why I love Z-Mobile. When I can't pay my bills, I say, hey, look, I messed up. You That's know, right. shit. That's right. Damn, the way my account set up, you know, I need some grace. Now, we can do that with our with the bill collectors. We need to be able to do that with the one who paid our debt. Yeah, how it shine. Our real debt. Our eternal debt. We need to be doing that with that. Give me a how it shine here, man. You understand? All right, crazy. Too, want to give a shout out to Officer Ayaz. Give him a hand. And the reason I'm the, the reason I'm the reason I'm saying that is because he's the only brother I know that could just be anywhere in the world doing anything in the world and still be moderating a YouTube chat. So I just want to love him for that. I'm looking at the YouTube chat. I see him in there at all times. You moderators need to get like him. I'm going to have to take somebody's riches. But uh, that's so powerful, man. Finish, read that one more time, uh, Yatai, Abubu Kushab, because that's the, This is the gist of the whole lesson here. Understand you got secret sins and hidden iniquities. Acknowledge them, confess them, or the Most High is going to hide his face from you. Go ahead. Um, Psalm 32 and 5, it said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. It says, I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Right. So you, didn't, you didn't do what high priest Ariad did. I mean, you can't hide that. So, if he's faithful and just to forgive you, and if, if you acknowledge it, it says he forgave. Look at what the NL, NI, you know, let's, look, at, look at the NLT. Finally, finally. I confessed my sins to you, and you stopped trying to hide my guilt. I'm so, yeah, and excuse me. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, because it's rebellion. That's rebellion. Inside joke. And, <laughs> and rebellion is as a sin as what, Chief? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Wait, you know, suffer not a. We don't have to put this extra shit on us, brothers and sisters. Excuse my language. Confess your iniquity. Stop hiding your sins. Make it right, right with your brother. Make it right with your sister. Make it right with your husband. Make it right with your wife. Make it right with your sister wife. Give the sister wives a hand in here. And, and, and I'm gonna let him say the last part. And and what? Make it right with your damn self. And yeah, make it right with your damn self. Some of y'all ain't right. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't right with yourself. Damn. Right? So, uh, Psalm 69 and 5. Book of Psalm, chapter 69, verse 5. It says, O oh God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Can we keep going? Yeah, That's one more. Fine. One more thing. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed. For my sake. Uh -huh, kind of. So, uh, some more. go ahead. It says, and let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Exactly. So seek the most high, and he's going to make sure. You know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot in Christianity. I didn't learn enough, of course, because I'm here. Right? But 
I did learn some things. I'll say that. I learned, I learned some things in Christianity. And there's a phrase that, that they used to say. I'm sure you guys can. This will resonate with you guys. Take one step and the Lord's going to take ten. Right? And so it is a bit of uh, synergism, right? I know you got you got to be Sakari Varsity to understand synergism. What synergism is is the opposite of free will. Synergism is is that God needs your help to fulfill His role for your life. Uh, that means you can be stronger than Him. You can resist His will. So that's stupid. But the the, the concept to a lower degree is okay. When we're speaking about it from our vantage point, right? Okay, I took one step, you know, just I'm at the acknowledge this, I'm about to do my thing, and then the most high really just steps in and goes 10 yards, 10 miles for you. He's coming to snatch the mic. Hurry, give me James 5 and 16. He's coming with fierce, he's coming with red eyes like Cyclops. Give me John 5 and James 5 and 16. I've seen him coming, that walk. I've seen that walk for decades now. Give me James 5 and 16, and then give me Luke 8 and 17. I'm going to end it there. James 5 and 16, and then Luke 8 and 17. Wherever God or whatever, any order. James 5 and 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. Luke 8 and 15. Luke 8 and 17. 17. James chapter 5 verse 16, confess your faults one to another mm -hmm. and pray for one another oh, that's good. That's good. that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Availeth much. Right? And now we read Luke 8 17. And why did I read that? Because you may not want to confess whatever, you, whatever your secret or hidden iniquity might be. But if you do, you now have a brother. And don't let it be because there's a lot of snakes in Israel. That's right. So you may not want to on that Instagram. confide on that ground. There's a lot of snakes on the ground. A lot of those women y'all be thinking are women. Those are the Akium. You invite that. In surgery you can do wonders. So go ahead. This is the book of Luke, chapter 8, 17 verse. Uh -huh. It says, For nothing is secret. Nothing is what? Nothing is secret. Nothing in secret. That shall not be made manifest. That shall not be made manifest. So it's best for you to acknowledge it, get it right with the Most High for yourself, or speak to the Akim about it. Because if it gets exposed, it's just going to make you look even worse. And if the Most High exposes it, you may, it, a judgment may, may come with the expose. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I'm going to end this by giving all praises on the glory to you. How about you now? Shut up. This shit is a vibe. You can't blow the high when they come from faith in the most high. I can have a drive, nigga. No matter how much you can thrive, nigga. Huh? Abraham and Isaac, you know, it's nothing to go sacrifice, nigga. Huh? Like a 7-5, got me feeling like niggas got a high.